Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to the Creepy and Paranormal Show. It has been ages since I've been able to sit down and record a podcast, but guess what? Here I am, doing one. So, if you can hear a strange, terrible sound in my voice today, it is because I have got some sort of sinus happening that has been hitting me now for the last two weeks and I just can't seem to shake it nonetheless i feel great i feel healthy except i sound like i'm talking through a coke bottle but a quick shout out to our show sponsors over at invoice cloud and home ground coffee thank you for keeping the show going and a request that if you would like to have your show aired or not your show but your product slash company aired on the show every week then just drop me a message and I will gladly get through to you with all the details and we can see how we can make that happen. All right, so today we have got a serial killer case for you, a true crime show, Um, so no paranormal entities but rather creepy stuff. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. So let's just dive straight into it. Harold Shipman, the Doctor of death. Harold Shipman, also known as Dr. Death, was one of the most prolific serial killers in modern history. Born in England in 1946, Shipman's life took a sinister turn as he embarked on a career in medicine, ultimately betraying the trust of his patients as well as the community. This essay and story will delve into the life, crimes and aftermath of Harold Shipman shedding light on the chilling tale of a physician turned murderer. Harold Frederick Shipman was born on January 14, 1946 in Nottingham, England. His upbringing appeared ordinary with no overt signs of the darkness that would later consume him. Shipman's interest in medicine emerged early leading him to pursue a career in healthcare. He attended Leeds School of Medicine, where he earned his medical degree in 1970. After completing his education, Shipman began his medical career, initially working in various hospitals and clinics across England. In 1974, he became a general practitioner in Todd Morden, where he established himself as a trusted and respected physician. Shipman's affable demeanor and professional competence endeared himself to his patients, many of whom viewed him as a pillar of the community. However, beneath the facade of compassion and competence lurked a sinister motive. Shipman's narcissistic tendencies and desire for control began to manifest in disturbing ways, leading him down a path of deceit and murder. Shipman's reign of terror spanned over two decades, during which he systematically preyed upon his patients, primarily targeting elder women. His modus operandi involved administering lethal doses of prescription drugs, particularly morphine, under the guise of medical treatment. Shipman's medical background allowed him to conceal his crimes effectively as his victims' deaths appeared natural or attributed to age-related illnesses. The first crime. Shipman's journey into depravity commenced in the quaint town of Todd Morden, West Yorkshire, where he secured his first job as a junior doctor in 1974. It was during his tenure at the Abraham Ormard Medical Centre that he committed his inaugural act of murder. The victim was Eva Lyons, a 71-year-old widow who had been under Shipman's care for several years. On the surface, Lyons' death appeared to be a tragic consequence of natural causes. Shipman attributed her demise to a sudden and unexpected heart attack a diagnosis that was readily accepted by her family and the local authorities. However, upon closer examination, 
discrepancies emerged that hinted at a more sinister explanation. Despite Shipman's assurances, several members of Lyon's family harbored lingering doubts about the circumstances surrounding her death. Their suspicions were further compounded by the discovery of inconsistencies in Shipman's medical records and the absence of any pre-existing cardiac conditions in Lyon's medical history. Sensing that something was amiss, Lyon's daughter, Kathleen Grundy, made the fateful decision to request a post-mortem examination. The results of the autopsy sent shockwaves through the tight-knit community of Todd Morden. Contrary to Shop Shipman's assertions, the forensic pathologist concluded that Lyons had not succumbed to a heart attack, but had instead been administered a lethal dose of diamorphine, which is a potent opioid painkiller. This damning revelation cast a pall of suspicion over Shipman, prompting an extensive investigation into his activities. And in the wake of Lyons' death, Harold Shipman's facade of respectability began to crumble. As the authorities delved deeper into the past, a disturbing pattern of malpractice and misconduct emerged, implicating him in the depths of numerous other patients. In 2000, Shipman was convicted of 15 counts of murder and one count of forgery. Although the true extent of his crimes may never fully be known, he was sentenced to life imprisonment, ultimately taking his own life in his prison cell. My word, prison cell. <laughs> in his prison cell in 2004. The true extent of Shipman's atrocities only came to light in 1998, when concerns arose over the unusually high number of deaths under his care. An investigation was launched, uncovering a trail of deception and death that shocked the nation. Shipman was arrested in September 1998, charged with the murder of 15 patients. Now Shipman's trial captivated the public as the magnitude of his crimes became apparent. The prosecution presented overwhelming evidence linking Shipman to the murders, including witness testimonies, medical records and forensic analysis. Shipman however maintained his innocence throughout the trial, denying any wrongdoing. And despite his protestations, the jury found Shipman guilty on all counts in January 2000. He was sentenced to life imprisonment, with the judge describing him as evil and beyond redemption. Shipman's conviction sent shockwaves through the medical community, prompting widespread reforms in healthcare regulation in patient safety protocols. The case of Harold Shipman remains one of the most notorious in criminal history, highlighting the vulnerabilities within the healthcare system and the potential for abuse of power by those in positions of trust. Shipman's actions shattered the lives of his victims and their families, leaving a legacy of pain and distrust that endures to this day. In the aftermath of Shipman's crimes, Significant changes were implemented to prevent similar atrocities from occurring in the future. Enhanced oversight measures, stricter prescribing guidelines and improved safeguards for vulnerable patients had been introduced to safeguard against the manipulation and exploitation of medical professionals. Harold Shipman's chilling saga serves as a cautionary tale of the darkness that can lurk beneath the facade of respectability. His transformation from trusted physician to serial killer shocked the world and forever tarnished the reputation of the medical profession. While Shipman may have been brought to justice, the scars he left behind continue to remind us of the fragility of trust and the importance of vigilance in safeguarding the welfare of patients. And there you have it folks. The Chilly Tales of Dr. Death, a.k.a. Harold Shipman. I hope you've enjoyed this short little episode and thank you for dealing with me while I sound like a clogged up toilet and this damn stuffy nose. 
But hopefully I'll be back soon with another story where you can actually make sense of what I'm saying in a better voice. Take care and don't forget when you go to sleep tonight, check under your bed. <laughs>